<laughs> Good afternoon. Um, welcome to my broadcast. Welcome to episode 688. <clears throat> the topic today is doing, doing, doing. How's your being? I'm going to break that down in a second and there'll be a little invitation at the back end of it just so I'm pre-warning you or pre-advising you. Before I jump into that, jump into that, let me choose myself so you know who I am and what I'm about, what this is for. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker and um, passionate champion for the divine feminine, helping women create balance in love, life and business. And being a passionate champion of the divine feminine informs on my work with women particularly, and also around the work with masculine energy as well, which is what led to these talks I started doing over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart, which got truncated and abbreviated down to MFTM for the sake of my broadcast titles, so it's easier to get more information in the title and make it more descriptive. So I think I've had these for over two years, and now it's episode number 688. And the topic today, again, is doing, 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 how's your being? And this is basically a theme I've been talking about in different ways, but I want to hit it a different way today because I had a little um, challenge recently, which I shared on a post on Facebook earlier, and I'll share that. And also an invitation. This, by the way, is a Facebook Live that I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you haven't watched me before, you can join me live there, and I'll give the links at the back end for this and the replay places on Facebook and YouTube. Okay, that's all the preliminary stuff out of the way. So, um, two days ago, um, I fell down the stairs. <laughs> I, was, I was walking down the stairs with stuff in my hands, and my foot just slipped on the carpet, and I just went flying down the stairs, and I landed hard on my low back. And first I was panicked because I've been working with a chiropractor and getting adjusted and getting myself back into shape, so I thought I may have messed up my back big time. But thankfully, or not so painfully, the pain wasn't in, the, in my low back, it was actually higher up on my side. Bottom line, just to cut to the chase, is I, looks like, well, it feels like I've done, I bruised, I bruised a rib, um, which has happened, not happened for a long time, but did it in a bicycle accident years ago. But it's, it's put a cramp in my style, <laughs> or cramp in my style, so to speak. What's happened, because if you've been watching my broadcast, you know that I have these occasional cough that shows up, um, for about three weeks now for a cold that went away three weeks ago. Let me just say that a coughing fit and a but bruised rib don't go together very well. It's really brought me present. And what it's done is actually brought me very present to myself, which is perfect timing because I created and launched a few days ago a course, sorry, I created and started offering a few days ago a course that I'm launching next Friday, which is called Come Home to Yourself. And I'm going to put a link in the comments after so you can find it, check it out for yourself or Sorry, how you can get in touch with me because I don't have a web page yet. There's no place to go for this. You have to find me to find out about it. Anyway, what I've been writing about in the content is really about how to come present to ourselves in a way that's self-supportive, self-caring, self-confident, um, um, self-centered in the sense of supporting ourselves. And so I got faced with that, with this experience, um, particularly today. Actually, last night I was at a, um, a Passover dinner, which is wonderful. And I was doing okay most of the evening. But when I woke up this morning, what I'm noticing, this is, this is just totally physical stuff. But the pain was origin, originally when I, got, when I hurt myself, it was a very much like a muscle pain because I obviously smacked the muscle hard. And so I didn't know the rib was hurting underneath that. I just felt the whole thing was painful. It wasn't, doesn't, I just showed a bruise. There's no inflammation. There's no blood. It's not like it's anything visible, but I could feel it. And so now today it's more, it's more direct, it's more focused sort of thing, which has really kept me very present. Not always in a good way, but it gave me this thought about what I'm writing about and speak, planning for this course I'm launching is about really how we take care of ourselves and how we're so caught up in the thing about doing, 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 that we forget about our beingness. Now, I know there are people out there who watch my broadcast who will go to the spa once a month or once a week and get taken care of, and that's a great way of being back in your beingness because it's a place of being in rest. But at the same time, so many people I know are doing the being activities. Like I'm gonna go and go to the spa, but I'm gonna have an agenda on my phone and keep track of everything, so you're gonna get ready to do things again the day as soon as you get out. I'm talking about how to be present to yourself in the midst of everything else, because a lot of people are actually doing, doing, doing in the midst of trying to be. And I'm flipping the script and say, okay, how can you be everywhere? As in, how can you be with yourself everywhere you go? And what I've been writing about and say this course I'm launching next Friday, 
plans Friday, we'll see. Um, which is going to be a group course. People can join in and I'll put the link in the comments. You can reach out to me for more information. The link, by the way, is how to reach me. It's not a link on the course. I need to email the details to you. Um, it's, very, it's very early. This is, this is not packaged and presented perfectly, I know, but it's really about, I'm really passionate about this message about how do you be with yourself? How do you be respecting yourself, approving of yourself, loving yourself, all these things I talk about in this course, whatever's going on. Like how can you take the doing this and put it put it out there in a way that's not the thing you have to keep focusing on and keep driving at and pushing on? I talked yesterday about um, one the one relationship above all others, which is the one with yourself. And this is another point about you about that because we are as human beings, and of course this is Saturday and it's the casual attire. So for a lot of people, this is a day off, but people are still doing stuff. They're very busy being active. Participatory being, uh, interesting. Participatory beings, but they're not being a being. If you get what I mean, we are human doings, not human beings, which is the challenge we face. We're so caught up in the way the world is um, encouraging us, perhaps challenging us, requiring us to be, that we're going to keep going and going and doing and doing. And I really want to speak to how can you be in a place of beingness, even though you may be out in the world doing, doing, doing. In some ways, it's very simple. It's about being aware of yourself. Okay, done. That's the end of the talk. We're done. Good night. See you later. No, it's more than that. Because the truth is that awareness, first for most people, including myself, is in the self-awareness to be present to ourselves and aware of what's happening, is not automatic 24-7. It takes practice. And also, it's so easy to get, I won't say distracted, but pulled into other focuses, which is why we get caught up in the doing this. You know, we, we look at the clock and go, oh, I need to be somewhere. I'm going to pack up and get our stuff out of here and go and run, run around and do things, which is part of life's challenges sometimes. But the thing is, what happens for a lot of people is they drop the beingness and they move into doing right away. And that for me is a, well, I'll say it's a shame, but it's also dysfunctional in a way because what happens is when we get caught up in the doingness out in the world all the time, we lose track of who we are. And it actually takes time we have to actually take a moment to take a breath and stop and go, oh, I'm here. I bring ourselves present to what's happening. So it's a trap we fall into because it's the way the world tends to work. But I'm very clear that we don't have to do it that way. So I'm just thinking about how some hows I teach you. So, so the key thing again is how do you bring your beingness to everything you do versus doing, 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 and then remembering to be in the middle of that. Yes, it's great that you do remember to be at moments, but how can you have a place of connection to yourself and remembering who you are everywhere you go and everything you do? That, that is probably one of the biggest gifts you can have. So how I want to say this is that, I'm going to pick a few of the examples from the, from the coursework. One of the things I talk about in the course is about self-approval. Because a lot of the doing this we do in the world is some way designed to get approval from other people. It may be a paycheck, it may be a date. It may be some satisfaction derived from what somebody else says to us. These are all externally sought, as you might have gotten from what I was saying. That framework is what keeps us in the doing mode and always trying to prove something, deliver something, make something happen out there, rather than realizing that we're already valuable enough inside. See, this is the thing. That proving that we do out there to get the reward, to be approved of, to be accepted, to be all those things, that approval and proving, because interesting other words fit together, is really when we forget who we are. Yes, being out in the world and functional is a crap, is a powerful place to be and a recommended because you want to succeed in the world, you want to be doing stuff. However, when you come from a place of beingness where you already approve of who you are and you learn how to fill up your own cup of approval first, put it that way, that's a, that's a term from a seminar I took years ago, which ties into this. Then you become more effective in the world because you're no longer driven to keep trying to get something done and get absolutely exhausted because you're proving, proving, proving all the time. You're being just as effective, but it's almost like you're, it's almost like a marathon instead of a sprint in some ways. I'm gonna say that analogy works. But the sprint, you're just working, working, holding hard so you blow, blow everything energy out. When you're doing a marathon, it's more of a longer journey we can just cruise through. And that kind of works. What I, what I really want to get to the point is when you bring your beingness into what you're doing and everything you and everywhere you go, 
you do things that, first of all, you do things that line up for you. That's a big part. You line up for yourself and you feel, feel alignment to who you are because that's where you start. Secondly, when other people demand things of you or want things from you or want to have you do something for them, for their approval, you get to see if you want to or not. And you can say no. That's a freedom that most people don't seem to remember. You know, the deadline at work, is it really a deadline? Is it their stress level? You know, one of the, one of the, a quote from many years ago I remember hearing, or actually probably a, one of these wall charts back in the days before memes, was, um, and it was a business term I remember vividly, was uh, your lack of pre-planning does not constitute my emergency. Now you may not be willing to say it to your boss, but to clients, to other places, sometimes having that place of willingness to say, you know what, that is that stress you're delivering is not mine, it's yours. Because I know who I am. So when I'm in that place of ownership of my own space, I'm not caught up in the stress that you're presenting. Now, this is a radical shift for some people to get to this place of going, I don't need to join in the panic? Oh my God. No, you don't. So this focus point from doing to being is an absolutely simple, however, most profound shift for a lot of people. Most people I'm aware of in this world don't spend much time in the being state, the being place, except when they maybe go home at night and sleep. Or maybe when they are, well, they won't be in the middle of sex for most people, unfortunately. Um, but it may be in the place where they're actually, actually, I'm trying to think where they would do it. Because <laughs> a lot of people in the eating are just doing, they're not being. Um, I watched that last night, actually. <laughs> not going to go there. Okay, leave that one alone. But a lot of people in, in eating, in sex, in, in activities are busy in the doing mode, not in the being mode. See, in the being, you would savor. If you're in the being space, you would enjoy and relish every moment, every morsel, which around food and sex, are good things to do. But a lot of times people are, uh, are eating food, like they're filling up the tanks, they don't care about what's going on. That's a doing activity, not a being activity. So the shift is key. It will change, your, it will change the quality of your life it will change the, the way you value who you are and what you're about. It's something that I'm very aware of is a, um, well, for some people this is not a new thing, but for a lot of people it is, idea about how to be more in your beingness so that when you do things, you come from a place of source, a place of strength, a place of comfort. Now, just to put a spiritual flavor on this, even though it's not Sunday yet, um, the way I, be, I, I the way I believe about the spiritual teaching, God, etc., 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 is that's within us, kind of like the force in Star Wars. Yes, like the force in Star Wars. God is not some deity on a throne throwing lightning bolts at everybody. I believe God is something within us, each of us. So when we connect to that beingness, it could actually be more spiritual by doing so. Now, for some of you, that's like, no, 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 I don't believe that God's out there and a Christian. I understand that's your choice. I'm speaking. There's a way to deepen it if you if this is your your um that's what we're looking for if this is your if this is your framework where you do understand this perspective this will add to your understanding of this if it doesn't you still get the beingness it's really up to you um and i don't i don't in the course by the way i don't pre, i don't preach or teach any spiritual principles but the side effect may be a more spiritual understanding of yourself which isn't a bad thing either so to wrap this up, for me, there's so much doing going on in the world is what's destroying a lot of what we want. You know, when we're, for example, I believe when we come from a place of beingness, our care for the environment would be much more proactive versus destructive. The doing is like, in some ways, doing is, um, for a lot of people now, there's conscious doing, which is what beingness is about when you're doing things consciously. But for most people, the doingness is a, uh, focus on the goal, ignore what's on the way. And so for my message at this point is when you are in your beingness, it's almost consciously doing everything because you're coming from a place of conscience, which is your beingness. There you are, conscious doing, that works. So there's an opportunity for you. If you want to learn how to do conscious doing <laughs> by being, be by being um, I would put the link in the comments from my, from my, pro my new course called Come Home to Yourself because that's what it's about. It's really coming home back inside to who you really are and to really own and honor and respect the beingness that you are. And for some of you, 
you need this more than other people. I'm not saying who it is, I'm not putting names out there, but if you feel called to this, again, I'll put the link in the comments to contact me so you can find out more about it. Um, I think that's it. This is my Saturday broadcast, so it's a weekend edition, hence the casual attire. And so I guess I should say happy Passover for yesterday and happy Easter to, for tomorrow for those people who celebrate whichever one you celebrate. Um, I get to dip, dip my toe in both. Um, and appreciate, and by the way, I appreciate all the love and and thank and and um, healing advice people are sending me for my my uh, bruised rib because it it's been a doozy today. But I'm grateful I can sign off this broadcast and go take care of myself with some ice um, again. And uh, yeah, I'm having a quiet day today. Got a busy day today. Got my road agape because we've got a big Easter service coming up. So if you're in town, come into agape. I will see you there. Um, with that, I thank you for watching. Again, put links in the comments for. Well, I'll put a link in the comments for the way to reach me so you can find out more about the coming home to yourself uh, course that's starting next week. And also, um, also put the self-love practice in there because that's another thing people are doing which is helping them as well. So in case you don't want to do the course but you want to do the self-love practice, that'll be in the comments too. Um, as I mentioned before, this is a Facebook Live I do every day, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, it is also in replay mode on my business page on Facebook and on YouTube so that we can find those. First of all, my personal page where I do my Facebook Live, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. If you want to find my replays on my business page, that's Barry Selby uh, Sorry, Facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby author. And you can follow, you can like my page there, please. And also my YouTube channel, which if you would follow, if you subscribe, I appreciate that. Is also Barry Selby. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. That I think will summarize it. Um, have a wonderful Saturday. Hope this has been of some benefit to you. If you have any questions, thoughts, or comments about this broadcast, please put them below in the comments and I'll respond when I sign off. If you want to share it with anybody you know who's been doing too much, feel free to do that. Um, this is just a little nudge and reminder and an invitation. So again, I'll put the link in the comments so you can reach out to me so I can send you the invitation to you directly. And uh, yeah, that'll do it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.